the first thing I'm going to do is uh, create a task that will have us optim optimize uh, our images. Um, so let's name this images. Okay. Right. So we want to um, define our source. Source is the images folder inside underneath the source directory. And from there, we want to use a new package called uh, image min. Okay. And after passing them through image min, we want to um, push them to distribution slash images folder. Have a typo here. Okay, um, I've gone ahead and created a added a, an image in the source uh, images folder. So let's go ahead and run the gap images task and see what happens. Right, so you can see here minified one image and saved 3.24 kilobytes in the process. That's not much. But depending on the image um, uh, format and things like that, it can be more, it can be less, depends. But it's nothing than it's better than nothing, right? Right. Okay. Um, then that's done with the images. Let's go ahead and uh, um, set up uh, a, a watch task which will uh, continuously watch the files that we specify for changes. Here you will see me using browser sync and the CSS tasks. Um, just bear with me for a moment. So gulp watch, uh, we will want to watch files in the SAS directory, if they change, and we when that happens, we call the CSS task, and we also want to run the copy task uh, when I'm not good with keyboard today, so yeah. when HTML or JavaScript changes. Yeah, so run the copy task. Okay. So by running this gap watch, gap automatically watches for CSS files and runs the CSS task and watches HTML JavaScript files and runs the copy task. Before doing that, you can see that we have a browser sync here. So we have to create a task for browser sync first. Uh, browser sync, for you that don't know, is uh, just a server that will uh, auto reload our changes, and uh, yeah, will basically act as our server, which will serve the contents of this uh, directory. We define the base dir as a distribution folder. Okay, without further ado, let's run Gulp Watch. Okay, we don't see anything yet, but uh, Browser Sync went ahead and opened our uh, browser, opened a new tab, and we are on localhost through port 3000. Now, if we were to go to source index file, and let's say create a paragraph here, hello world. Let's save this. Before going any further, we first need, uh, we forgot to configure browser sync to stream the data when changes happen from the tasks that we specify to it. So let's go ahead and run uh, here on uh, copy task. Let's pipe and run browser sync stream. 
and let's do the same for the CSS task. Let's just go and paste this one. Okay, now let's go ahead and restart the Galp Watch task. We have Hello World. Now, if I were to change this and make it just hello, let's see what happens. You see automatically refreshes the page and uh, yeah, we have the new change there. Okay, that's good. Um, now let's talk about JavaScript. Right now we don't do anything with JavaScript. We just, uh, if I were to create a file, uh, custom, let's say custom, um, JS, alert, hello world. Uh, as you will see, nothing happens in the browser. I refresh, nothing happens. The reason being is that um, right now, Gab doesn't know how to process and copy JavaScript files. So in order to be able to do that, we need to copy this line here and add it to our copy task there with dot in front. Okay, let's restart our server. Hmm, still nothing happens. The reason for that is because in the index.html file, we haven't referenced anywhere our uh, script. And so we can do that by writing, uh, let's see, JavaScript folder. And I want the custom JS file. And you can see, boom, hello world. Okay, so now what? We can make uh, our JavaScript smaller, like uh, CSS, by using something called Uglify. It's the same as saying minifying for CSS, but for JavaScript it's called Uglify. Um, we're going to introduce two new packages here. One uh, will help us to um, only run something a process if it meets certain criteria it's like an if statement and for this we're going to use gulp if so because we pass html and javascript here we need to only do certain things when javascript files run we don't want to do that for html so when any javascript file passes through here we want to call the Uglify package. Let's save that. Let's restart. And I should, yeah, that we can know here that it's Uglified because it was one liner. So let's go change that. For example, I'll add a second one or something. Yeah, you can see it runs in all, all three tabs, but this is what I want to show you here. This is a clarification. All right, let's close some of the tabs, obviously. Okay. Right. Um, now let's say we want to, we have many files as before with the CSS. I have custom two. And in there I have a uh, console log this time. Okay. Let's remove the alerts. They're getting annoying. We can have here function hello and uh, console log world okay uh, also in order to be able to run our code here we need to reference it here custom 2 
now I have multiple JavaScript files and I want to bundle them together. Do the same thing as I did with uh, SAS. Uh, there's no import statement in JavaScript like SAS. Well, there is with um, module systems, but we're not using any here. So we have to use something else to be able to bundle everything together and create a single JavaScript file. To, all we need to do that, we can use the use ref uh, package, which will go ahead and bundle everything together. Or not. We first need to write some comments here. So we write here build JS JavaScript. It's a directory, and we want to call it bundle JS. And at the end of this, we also have to write and um, so build and build extra iPhone here. Okay, now let's restart the server. See what happens. You can see that there's no battle JS here, but that's because we need to resave one of the two files uh, in our source. And there you go. Now we have a battle JS which contains both of uh, uh, the function and the console log, and they are also uglified. Now let's go and remove. Uh, Close those tabs, and now it would be a good idea to add some uh, source maps because, as with uh, CSS, now that we have a single file here, it will be good to know where the mistakes are in our code, as explained before in part one of this uh, two part series. Okay, but now the process is the same, we'll just uh, copy this here and we can pass them to here. Uh, the only difference is time is we need to also pass this because we want to do it only if the file getting passed is JavaScript. And the same after the amplification. And we just want them in the same directory, which can do it like that. Okay, now we need to remove JS from here as it's handled by use ref now. And now we also have uh, some syntax mistakes here. I forgot to add brackets. Save this. We restart our calp watch. Let's wait for the browser to come in. There we go. And now let's try receiving the. Oh, let's change it instead. Hit save, and you can see a bundle JS map here as well. Now, what if you wanted to write uh, next generation JavaScript, ES6 or ES2017? Uh, we can do that using the bubble package here and all we have to do is just after the source maps here we can again if this is JavaScript file run Babel okay and we want to also add presets uh, with uh, env in here and we're also missing a Parenthesis here. Okay, uh, we need to restart the server to load this package. And all we have to do now is go, let's say, to custom JS. And the new syntax for writing functions is called fat arrow functions. It's like this. Save this and now let's go to bundle.js and we can see here 
that this con was converted to uh, a normal function as in ES5 and yeah that's pretty much it really uh, the last thing for this series is to be it's a really cool thing what if you had a ton of uh, CSS rules that you don't use well we can uh, sort of remove it with a process again and for this we purpose we are going to use the uncss package here I created a new task because uh, for my tests uncss takes up some seconds to compile so imagine trying to uh, change a few rules in your CSS and each time it takes so many seconds it would be a waste of time so we can just use it as a standalone task and run it when we finish with our code before pushing to production so all we have to do is uh, before the prefixer uh, we write here on CSS and here we specify which HTML um, files to watch for uh, depending on your structure in the source file in the source folder uh, you need to define uh, this here by you know just writing for example this um, I don't know uh, pages sorry in uh, quotation marks this pages and everything in there that has to do with HTML okay and to test this out let's go here um, in SAS let's write a, a class that doesn't exist uh, color red okay and let's close this and run gulp on CSS Yeah, you can see it took about four or five seconds or something and if we're going to check our style CSS we can see that there's no mention to dot to class title and uh, with color red because we don't use it anywhere so it wasn't uh, included in the final style CSS all right this is where uh, this series ends I hope you enjoyed it uh, you can find the final um, directory that we used here uh, in the github repo in the description of this video thank you for watching and i'll see you next time bye